So this is the trailer for the movie Devotion. Maybe you've seen it on the commercials promoting this big blockbuster movie that is now out in theaters across the country. It's the story from the Korean War of two aviators. It's, it's quite a historical tale of the first black aviator to fly from an aircraft carrier in the Navy history and his interesting counterpart who's from a New England prep school. It's such different stories brought together by war. And this story is written, it's based on the book by Adam Makus. He's from Montoursville, grew up in Montoursville in Lycoming County. And we talked to him about what it was like to be involved in the whole production of this movie. Here's an extended version of our interview. Well, first of all, it's just great to see you again. Gosh, John, it's been a long time. It's great to see you too. So um, just what kind of whirlwind has this been? Well, John, it's been, uh, it's been like a 10 year process to get from book to film. And uh, I think I, I won the lottery with this one. I mean, I've learned it, it's almost like lightning striking once, twice, three times in the same place to get a movie made. You need a great actor, you need the money to make it, you need a director, and you need a studio to believe in you. So until you get those four pieces, you know, it's it's an impossibility. So I'm I'm the luckiest guy on earth right now. And really, when you started this whole process with devotion, did you even have in mind that this could be the end result? You know, I wanted a very simple thing to happen, and that was for the world to get to know these incredible men. Tom Hudner, Jesse Brown, the heroes at the center of the story. I just simply wanted their names to be known because I knew they had done something so remarkable in wartime that it was really a, a shame and injustice that they had been forgotten to time. And so had the rest of the Korean War generation. I mean, I, America should not have a forgotten war, not when we lost 33,000 men and women. So that was my goal, not really to make a movie someday, but to somehow put the Korean War back on the map. And now we're doing it. We're gonna do it in a big way. And, and they say it's the forgotten war. Will it be forgotten after this movie comes out? I think we're gonna change that. How did you first find out about this story? So this incredible story, uh, I actually ran into one of the heroes in the strangest of ways. I was at an event in Washington, DC. I was just a young reporter looking for a story and Tom Hudner had spoken at this event. It was time to leave and I was in the lobby of a hotel and there he was across the way. He was just sitting there reading his newspaper and I knew it was now or never. This was like a rock star to me sitting there and nobody else knew who he was. Everybody was just passing by. This was a Medal of Honor recipient, a man who had done an incredible act of heroism in the Korean War and it was my chance. So I approached him, he handed me his business card. He said, certainly I'd be happy to tell you my story. See, Tom, because he wore the Medal of Honor, I always thought, okay, well, they, they know their heroes and, and they act like it. No, Tom used to say, we wear this for everyone who served. And so to him, the Medal of Honor meant an obligation to tell his story and to tell the stories of other people. I hit the jackpot when I met that man. And, and once you started to uncover more and more in this story, it just had to be mind boggling. It really was. It was a story of Tom's friendship with the first black carrier pilot in the U.S. Navy. And Jesse Brown was his name. And I discovered he came from incredible circumstances. He was the son of a sharecropper growing up in Mississippi, dirt poor, who had the dream of flying for America and fighting for America, which was amazing because the country didn't really love him back. And yet he wanted to go off and defend it as his father and as his uncles had before. They had fought in World War I, they were Buffalo soldiers, and he wanted to go fight for America, which was incredible to me. And that's how he became the first black pilot. Uh, he, people even who didn't believe in him saw his desire to fly for this country and they said, we need to give this guy a chance. So he was an amazing person I, I found along the way. What about when it's gone from you know your book and all the work you put into that how involved have you been with the, the movie process of it and the screenplay and all that? I was so lucky that the people who made this movie wanted to make a true story about amazing people. And when, they go, when you go into it with that desire, they could have made a fictional version of this. No, they wanted to tell the true story. And so they welcomed me into the process. So I got to work on the script a little bit and make my notes on, on two drafts of the script. When it came time to find the aircraft and the pilots for the movie, 
I said, these are the guys you should be working with. I even helped them paint the planes, you know, to get the markings right, because every little detail mattered. We were making the first Korean War movie since Pork Chop Hill. Pork Chop Hill was 1959, starring Gregory Peck. So we were making history by making this movie, and I wanted to make sure it was right. And I even got to make a little cameo, John, which was pretty cool. I got my four seconds of fame. Oh, I will be looking for you when I watch the movie, definitely. Adam, you know we followed your career from back when you were in high school, and you just have always had this drive to tell veteran stories, and it really started with your roots in Lycoming County, didn't it? It absolutely did. I was lucky to grow up in close proximity to my grandfathers who had served in World War II. One of them, Mike Makis, was from Plymouth, Pennsylvania. And so I was always back and forth between my home in Lycoming County and the Valley itself. And just growing up around these amazing men showed me that there was something special about this generation. And I knew at an early age, I wanted to do everything I could to bring their stories into the public consciousness. And I'm just so thankful that this is Devotion was uh, the third book I wrote. And I, you know, it was a Korean War. I never thought it would really go that far because it's just not a very well known war. It's not like my World War II books. But now to know that we're going to show people where the Korean War was fought, what it was about. And now when a Korean War veteran walks past you on the sidewalk and you see that hat that says Korea, it's going to mean something. And when we thank them for what they did, to, to defend democracy, it's gonna, it's, we're gonna know a little bit about who they are and we're gonna really mean it. And you really, you know, growing up in this area, you had to realize right away how much people here respect our veterans and, and their stories. And, and you've just carried that to a whole new level. Oh, thank God I grew up in Pennsylvania, John. It's, uh, it was a state that contributed almost the most men to World War II. I think there were other states that led the way, but Pennsylvania was like right up there, top three. So I grew up with veterans all around me. I grew up where people valued this country and the patriotism. So I've always said, you know, yes, I've had some success, but you're, you're only so much of that. A lot of it's tenacity, a lot of it's effort, but so much of it is the people who raise you and the community and the environment you grow up in. And so uh, I'm just glad I had the chance to, to give back. And I think this movie is going to give back in a big way. And is it still you and your family, such a big family effort for all of these projects that you work on? It really is. My, my dad uh, does the interviews. My mom and sister run the office to pay the bills and keep the lights on. My brother, Brian, does the research for the books. You know, people say he's really the smart one behind the scenes. I'm, I'm just the, uh, the promoter. But uh, it's a family business. It, it always has been. It always will be. And uh, yeah, it started with my grandfathers. And when you look at what you've experienced the past couple of weeks, how cool has it been to go to these premieres and, you know, walk the red carpets and, and you know, be with all these celebrities as we see in Hollywood and stuff? That, that has to be quite an experience. Oh, John, it's, it's the kind of thing you always imagine what it's really like. And the other day we pulled up to the uh, premiere, the world premiere in Hollywood. And there was a Corsair fighter at the start of the red carpet. I mean, they literally brought in a, a World War II aircraft, the Korean War plane too, and they set it on the, on the edge of the red carpet. So it was a big signal that this movie is gonna be serious. And walking the red carpet, all the cameras on you, the real amazing thing is not, oh, I'm talking to the media, I'm talking to, uh, Deadline Hollywood or whomever. It was, I'm telling the story of Tom Hudner and Jesse Brown and the Korean War. I mean, look at these actors next to me. They're doing interviews. Everybody's talking at the same time. It's chaos. What are we talking about? We're talking about Tom Hudner and Jesse Brown and Marty Good. Joe Jonas of the Jonas Brothers is next to me, and he's telling the story about this pilot he plays. Everybody is fired up for something that's important for a change which is really cool. We're not talking about Spider-Man. We're not talking about a fictional universe. We're talking about Hollywood using its power for something good. So that's and, why the, the premiere was so great. And, and you know, we saw how big Top Gun was. That's fiction. This is Top Gun level story that's real. And, and hopefully people see that when they start seeing this movie. I'm sure that's what you're hoping. It's, it's our true story and it hits harder for that reason. Sometimes it's a good thing when you go to a movie and you come out emotionally moved. 
it, 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 it means it hit you. It resonated. It, it fulfilled something in your soul. And this movie is going to do that. The aircraft in the movie are real. So you're seeing incredible real flying. Uh, the team that did Top Gun filmed this one. And so they use the latest techniques. We have better stuff than Top Gun had. So the planes are real. The story is real. The characters are real. The photos at the end will make people cry, literally, when they see the real faces. And there's even a cameo from Elizabeth Taylor in this movie, you know, because in the real story, she was part of it. So when Elizabeth Taylor steps on the screen of this, this film, people are just blown away because it's like, how do you invent a true story that's this good? Yeah, and Adam, I have to ask you, the last time that we talked to you with our viewers, um, that they heard from you, we were talking about Clarence, of course, and Spearhead. Just what did it mean to you? I know you visited with him just weeks before he passed. What what did it mean to get to see him one more time? Uh, Clarence Clarence was like a grandfather to me, and, and he was like my grandfather before from Wilkes-Barre. I mean, just a good Pennsylvania guy who who did his part in the war and it was it was tough to it's tough to see that generation literally slipping away. Clarence made it to 99 and the world feels a little bit empty when you lose somebody like that. But if we take the lessons from them and if we take their example and we allow it to maybe make us better people to remind us, hey, Clarence wouldn't say that. Clarence wouldn't do that. Then in that way their legacy lives on forever. So I'm a better person for knowing him and and for that reason, you know, he'll always be with me. And I can tell, Adam, that the, you've made that kind of your mission in life to make sure these stories are told and heard. It, it is absolutely a calling, John. Um, you know, ever since I was a kid and other kids were going to the mall, you know, I was sitting down interviewing veterans. It was pretty nerdy stuff, but it, it was important. So guys like Clarence, he was the most legendary World War II tank gunner living in Lehigh, in Pennsylvania, and nobody knew it. Same thing with Tom Hudner, the hero of devotion, living up in Massachusetts, a hero in our midst, and nobody knew it. So that's my mission, and, and we can all do that. If there's a hero in our family, if there's a hero in our neighborhood, take the time to, to care about who they were and uh, you know show respect for all they've done. Adam, I can't thank you enough for taking some time to talk to us today. This is awesome. Oh, John, you guys have been great supporters my whole life, and uh, I'm glad we can share in this experience together. The movie is going to be so much fun, but hey, it's a victory for uh, for a hometown uh, guy, and the whole hometown team wins with something like this. Adam shared with us some photos that he has from this whole process, and, and this is a great one, I think. This is Glenn Powell, the star of the movie, Tom Hudner, the story behind it all, and Adam before Tom passed away. Such a great photo and great experience. Of course, it's his heroism, just part of what's being honored in the book and the movie. And this was just some of the photos Sony Pictures provided of, of Adam with Glenn on the set of the movie, Adam at the, the big premiere. Such an exciting experience for him. And again, devotion now in theaters across the country. Adam has written other war books. We focused on him for Spearhead, the um, World War II story of Clarence Moyer from Lee Heighton. He has A Higher Call, which is another World War II book, Voices from the Pacific, and now, of course, Devotion getting a lot of attention. You can check out our On the Pennsylvania Road about all this, too, at WNEP.com. Bye, everybody.